Hey guys, back this week with another uh, Showdown Live. Uh, honestly, despite being a backbone of Pokemon Showdown content on YouTube, I really haven't done many of these, which is a shame because they're usually a really good source for kind of longer form content that just is as tricky to edit for me and, you know, for other stuff like that. But uh, the truth was that I had a bit of like an inferiority complex with the actual gameplay on my part. You know, most of the other big guys in YouTube are much better players than kind of a mid-tier player like myself. And I was just a little bit self-conscious about not being as good as them. I figured, you know, I'll try to play as much as possible this spring and summer, and uh, I'll get good first, and then I can return to this once I'm a better player. But I gave it some thought this week, and I realized how silly that is. Uh, if my channel has any kind of theme at the moment, it's, you know, improvement and learning and even teaching this game. And if I can kind of feel myself for a second, I think I'm pretty good at explaining my thought process and what I'm thinking as I play. So really, what better way to teach and show how to get to be a top 500 ladder player by taking you through my process or even you know my journey uh firsthand so yeah with that said let's just uh let's get into it uh this week i'm going to use a scarf hydragon team i've used this even on a couple of videos before i've been really enjoying it lately but mostly because i haven't been team building that much lately and i just like how it plays i've said before that if you're learning i think using a static team is kind of a good way to improve and get better and you can find like little holes in teams so recently like i had a hip out on here for a long time and i loved it because it's such a great answer to excadrill but I kind of realized over time that just you really need a water absorber in this tier just to deal with like the omnipresent Dracovish or all these like... There's not a lot of water offense in OU right now, but there's enough that it's really troublesome if you don't have something to sort of eat that up. So even Keldeo, this guy can be useful again, just to sort of present a threat of a water absorber, you know? But anyways, a lot of talking, let's get right into it. I'm about the 1500s I believe right now on this account, so uh, let's zoom in a little bit. So yeah, we'll see what goes. So speaking of which, uh, looks like his defensive core is these three. His steel type is more offensive. Normally you see defensive steel types in this gen, but Excadrill is obviously super threatening. Uh, I don't normally like my Terrakion as a lead matchup here, and I don't see reason to go for it otherwise. Unless that's a Scarfer, and then I can beat it to the punch of my Terrakion, but I don't love that as much. Uh, Aegis Slash would be great against this guy's elite, but doesn't seem like a very common lead himself. Uh, even this guy might try to Volt Switch off the rip, but a Volt Switch off the rip would be super threatening with my Seismitoad, so I don't think that's particularly likely. I don't think that's even a set nowadays. I think people would rather run Grass Knot, especially, yeah, once again, that Seismitoad I mentioned. Uh, my Toad is a good matchup versus almost everyone. There's almost no one who can threaten me getting a Brox right away, except for these two. Zeroar as a lead is really great, especially if you're predicting a Seismitoad, so that kind of makes sense. Uh, this is tricky. Um, I never go with my Terrakion as a lead, but I think I like it here because... I, I figure one of these three offensive mods of his are common, and he should beat all of them. So, let's see if I'm correct. I am correct. He pulls a Zeroara. I think I have common lead, especially if you're against the Seismitoad, because it seems like a no-brainer for you, but this guy's probably packing Grass Knot if he did this preventatively against the Seismitoad. So, Earthquake here would be pretty obvious. I'm going to do it just to let him know I have it. He might try to stay in and get cheeky. Okay, he does scout it. That's a correct play, on my, in my opinion. Yeah, that tip out on will eat that up all day. He should be going for rocks here. I'll go to my own. And if he's anticipating that, I'm not sure who he would go for. His x could try to spin it off, but my Seismitoad would defeat him pretty easily. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure who he's gonna go for. Maybe his Hydreigon. Yep, Hydreigon comes out. That makes sense because uh, he can't, if I Earthquake preventatively for one of these two to stop them from coming in, his Levitate prevents that. Um, a Draco Meter is super scary here. I've got a Spideft Clefable. I don't see a reason not to go it. If it Nasty Plus here, that's a good reason. I pull that exact same play with my High Dragon here all the time. So I'm going to protect, just get a little bit of Sandstorm Chip. He does have Flash Cannon. That's pretty rough. Uh, I think I have to go Mandibus here. It'd be Draco Meteors, and he's totally got my number. He even gets a Spideft drop. I think something's going to die to this. Um, and I honestly, I should have given it more thought, but. I think the Mandibus is the best option to throw out here. Um, yeah. I, I kind of want to keep the Clefable for the Hydreigon in the future. Uh, I can swap into the Sylveon really handily. This guy's already going to be pressured by Zero Aura a lot. Yeah, I, I, I might regret this, but I'm going to I'm gonna sack the Mandibus. So I can go into my Terrakion. That should bring out the Hippowdon again. I'm going to double to my own Hydreigon. Okay, he goes Toxapex. I don't see Toxapex threatening me that much besides a burn from Scald or uh, Toxic. Toxic would suck though. Hmm. 
I wonder if it made more sense to go to my Aegis Slash here. But n no one besides Clefable or Aegis Slash would really love a Toxic. Uh, I'm going to Nasty Plot. Scout it out. It does go Sylveon. Uh, I'm going to check a Calc here. This is something that I should know, especially if I'm running this team more and more. Uh, of course, the plus two Flash Cannon completely annihilates Clefable. That's the main point. But um, I'm not so certain about Sylveon. And it's... A common situation I should know. Not even close. Wow. Okay. See, that's why I'm glad I scattered it out. Uh, I'll go to my Aegis Slash on the Hyper Voice. If I'd known that in advance, probably would have made a prediction there. Uh, I was kind of worried about the Toxpec staying in, so I'm not sure if I would have made that prediction. Uh, okay, I'm going to... Iron Head is pretty obvious here, and this guy's being pretty willing to switch around a bit, so I feel like I could predict the Excrete Drill or the Hip Powered on here. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go to my size and put Toad and double. Oh, it goes to the Pex. That's not the end of the world. I could trade an Earthquake with him and sort of scout a set whether he's especially defensive or not. Eating a Toxic isn't the best in the world, but I can get some good intel. That did not that much. See, I just ran the Calc, and I think... I just ran the Calc, and I think he's Fizz Def given by that range. Uh, so that means my Hydra Gun should have a pretty good matchup against him. He knocks off this time. Uh... I'm going to go to my Clef, see if he stays in. He goes to Dragon, that works out great. Definitely going to threaten this thing out. Uh, I'm going to go for a Teleport, hoping he switches out. He does switch out. Uh, I should be able to get my own High Dragon in here. And uh, he went straight for it last time. I really don't think he's threatening this High Dragon that much. I'm going to Flash Kid on the Sylveon. Great, we get the Sylveon. I should chip it a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if he wishes here. I'm tempted to get really cheeky and nasty plot, but I don't want to risk that at all. Uh, I'll go to my Aegis Slash again. Keep up the the offense. Does wish. Again, I I really want a nasty plot there. That would have been really funny. But I guess he's just going to protect here anyways. Uh, so I think I have to Iron Head on the Protect to force it out afterwards. And then he will go to probably his Toxic Packs. I think I have to go to High Dragon again. It's taking a lot of chip now. This guy's made the switch right to Sylveon every time. I'm going to see if he's... He has no reason not to. I was, I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if he stayed in to get cheeky and go for a knockoff. But he's no reason not to go to Sylveon here. No reason at all. Um, I'm going to double to Aegislash Slash then. Oh. Interesting. Well, he did get Cheek and stay in. I wanted to drink a Meteor there, too, but... Uh, and this guy's Max Fizz Def, so I don't like this at all. I don't want to risk a Scald, or a Knockoff would be even worse, yep. Losing Leftovers on this guy sucks a little bit, but maybe I can get something to my I drag on now. Great, he stays in. I don't care about a Burn on Cliff Fable at all. In fact, I like it, because that way it's not paralyzed, which is the only real status besides Sleep that I wouldn't like. I guess Freeze. Okay, we get this guy back up to full. He's getting a little bit worried because between Life Orb and Stealth Rocks, he was taking a little bit too much damage for my liking. He stayed in last time. I feel like there's no way he's gutsy to do it again. He is. He takes a lot of damage for it. Does he haze here? Skult. He hazes and helps me out. <laughs> there's no way he's hazing there twice. He might stay in, but not a haze. So he doesn't have Toxic... Oh, he probably does. This is his fourth move. I was going to say, there's no way he doesn't have a Toxic or Toxic Spikes. That'd be insane. Um, okay, I don't see any reason for him to stay in here. Maybe if he wants a knockoff. I'm going to double the Aegis Slash again on the Sylveon. Yep, here it comes. And now that Toxic is going to come back on 60%, I want to see how much a move would do against it. Uh... Well, this is a bit risky, but I think I'm going to Shadow Claw predicting the Toxic Pex here because I can still 2 it KO it. Oh, he protects. I knew that. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, that was a mistake. Uh, that forces me to go to my Clef, I think, because I don't want to eat the Mystical Fire. He's already getting a little bit low for my liking. He's coming in a lot. Yep, there's that. Point to Wish. I'm not sure if I'll pass it to myself or try to get to someone else in the meantime. Here's the Exit Drill. I'm going to go to my Seismitoad on the Rapid Spin. I could have gone Aegis Slash, but 
going into an Aegis Slash on an Exeggeol just seems like a terrible play. Uh, I'm going to get them back up. I'm not sure who he'll go to here. My Sesmatoad actually is a pretty good matchup, all things considered, especially with this Hydreigon getting chipped down. So I want to keep up Brox because it's the same reason for me. Uh, and try to suffocate him with uh, my own offensive mon so that he can't be passing wishes to it too frequently. He could Nasty Plot again here. Hmm. If he Nasty Plots again here, that'd be pretty devastating. I lost a Mandibuzz over that last time. But the Seismitoad is useful, and I just said it has like, some good matchups across the board. The, the Zeraora is still a question mark. Um, hmm, this is a tricky one. I do have a decent amount of Spadef on my Aegislash. So I could eat and Draco Meteor there too, but I couldn't threaten it out afterwards. You just need a Flamethrower afterwards. You know, maybe a mistake. I might regret this afterwards, but he's definitely got the advantage on me right now. I think I'm going to make a bit of a play here. So I'm going to Toxic. Oh, it does not work out at all. But with Leftovers, I should be able to come back in again. Leftovers was knocked off. Shoot. Okay. Um, I have to go Fable here. Makes a great play by going to Execute Drill. Uh, I'm going to protect and get a little bit of chip back. Oh, Leftovers knocked off. That doesn't do anything. <laughs> Iron Head's there. Um... I don't want to be getting these rocks off. Again, I want to keep pressuring this Hydreigon as much as possible. So I'm going to sack my Seismitoad. Oh, shoot. Shoot. <laughs> shoot. <laughs> I thought he would take he would take 12% there. And then misplay. Um, well, this is looking bad now. There's no reason for him not to go to Hip Out on here. At least try to punish it with the Toxic. Uh, I'm not sure what he clicks here. Doing this, predicting an earthquake, but we'll see. It's gonna take a lot of chip. Yep, see, that was bad. Uh, Moonblast, we're gonna be trading damage here, so I'm gonna wish. And he keeps getting that Slash or that Exit Drill in. We'll sh I think it shall be the death of me. Uh, expect an Iron Head here. Swords Dance is on me. He's completely got my number this game. That's for sure. Um, I think I might have to wait for a protect. I could sack something, but I can't think of anything that I want to sack. All of these guys are necessary wall breakers. I think I gotta hope for a double protect, and then maybe my Terrakion can. Nope. This guy dies. I was assuming there that he was um, Sand Rush. They should also invite in Powdon. Uh, I'll double to my Hydreigon. We'll see if he stays in or not. Goes to, goes to Hydreigon here. Uh, do I risk a speed tie? Again, I'm in such a bad position right now. I think I do need to risk a speed tie. Okay, it's not the play you want to be making, but it worked out. And here comes Big Bad Zero Aura. Is he knock off here? I think the fighting type move is the most obvious to cover two of the three. Let's go for a fighting type move. He should be following that up with a knockoff though. I want to go to Terrakia on the knockoff, but I need his speed to beat this guy. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is a very losing position. I get a crit, that's really handy, but Let's see. Yeah, back to the Powdon. I wonder if he whirlwinds here. Probably a slack off. It's the safe move, even though he's in a very commanding position. Wow, okay, aggressive play. I'm go back to High Dragon again. There's the Pex here. Uh, I have to nasty plot and get a crit here. There's no other way to beat the Sylveon. Like protecting it more sand chip, be a good play. Let 
We don't get the crit. That's almost certainly GG unless I get some... I can't even think of a scenario where I win this. <laughs> uh, let's see how many we can get. I don't want... I don't want a 5-0. Here comes the Poudon, here to claim me. That was a good game. Um, so I'm actually going to review that piece. I got beat pretty handily there. I want to see what I could have done to prevent some of these plays. Okay, so I just looked over the replay of that game. I was trying to just, you know, I think that's the best way to learn if uh, you're trying to improve and learn from your mistakes, obviously. And I wasn't sure what I could have done better at first, but yeah, after looking through, I realized that pretty much a crux matchup was my Fable will be able to restore health on all of these guys. And of course, the best matchup my opponent had versus him was this XQ drill. And I wasn't really giving the XQ drill enough respect that Swords Dance was pretty damning near the end. And uh, I should have been more aggressive with getting my Seismitoad in to prevent that. Uh, so that's a bit of a hole in this team because actually drill I don't have a great swap in besides the Manda Buzz. The Manda Buzz ended up dying very early on to the Hydreigon, which you know I, I'm not gonna beat myself up about that too much because having a Hydreigon in on your Seismitoad is a bit of a shitty situation. You know you gotta choose to sack the Seismitoad or you know predict if he's gonna go for a nasty plot there. So it's it's not a great situation. I'm not gonna beat myself up too bad, but uh, knowing that my Manda Buzz, who's the best matchup I had versus extra drill, was dead. I should have been a bit more careful with my Clefable and gotten the Seismitoad more aggressively because the Clefable was really the key to all that. And there's a number of scenarios where I got him in versus the Iron Head and I was just, there's not much I could do. This is also compounded by the fact that like my only spin blocker of course dies to a single Earthquake and there's a terrible risk and has a hard time Okoing it back. So uh, next time I come up against Extra Drill, I'm gonna have to be a lot more careful with my Clefable. So yeah, that's a note to make. Uh, it was a good game, you know, there's a lot to take away from that. And uh, on the road to the top 500, we need all the help we can get. Okay, so for this matchup, this guy's got a much more aggressive team than the last one. Uh, I'm gonna have to be very careful about what matchups I feel at the right time. Uh, I'm guessing he's gonna go for one of his pivots at the beginning. So these four are probably the main culprits there. Uh, so let's take a look. Terrakion matches up pretty well versus everyone but these two because he can't Oko them from full. Uh, but again, I don't love leading with Trakion. I want to keep him safe for the end game. Uh, Aegis Slash, not my favorite matchup with these guys. I could possibly Oko the Dragapult with Shadow Sneak, but it's still a bit scary. Uh, Seismitoad against these special attackers is a bit scary, but it does well these two very cleanly. Uh, but if I'm him, I'm not expecting a Rotom lead. I'm not going to use a Rotom lead because Seismitoads are so common. Uh, Clefable is okay. Uh, the Cinderace u turning on the beginning is also pretty common, so I don't want to eat a Pyro Ball if I don't have to. Uh, Amanda Buzz against these four, not bad actually. Again, I'm not expecting the Rotom to be frank, so that would be the only matchup that's a big concern there. Uh, that's actually not the worst lead I can think of. And then there's my own Hydreigon, which I mentioned in the past that it can be used as a bit of a bluff here, because it seems a team preview to be a more likely Scarfer than my Terrakion, but that's a very risky to play to begin with. And I'm not sure if I want to risk against the likes of these two, where his own Hydreigon could be a Scarfer at that rate. So, um, with all that said, I think I like my Amanda Buzz because he can eat hits from these two. He's not too afraid about this guy, and I'm not expecting the size of this uh, Rotom Wash coming in. If he goes Hatterene off the rip, that would be a little bit intimidating, but I'm faster and I can get off a of U-turn. Mm. Okay, let's go, let's go Cinderace here. Um... I'm expecting a straight out of the gates U-turn, uh, but who is the U-turn going to? Perhaps Rotom. So I'm gonna do my own U-turn, so I can field the better matchup there. If he goes to Rotom, I should get up free rocks with my Seismitoad. Uh, if he goes to one of his, all of his mods are so offensive, I should be able to counter it with something. He does go to Rotom as predict though. It's a Rocky Helmet, that's an interesting concept. Uh, so I'd be a bit worried about it tricking a Scarf to my Seismitoad, or there's even tricking a Ring Target. That's a cool little tech you might want to look up. Uh, I'm just going to go for... Oh no, I, I was about to just autopilot and go to Stealth Rock here, but I think the Hatterene is super likely. Uh, I'm going to go straight to my... I think Aegis Slash. Yep, okay. That's something I actually have trouble catching sometimes, but uh, I do pick it up this time. Uh, I'm not sure if he'll go to the Rotom here or what he'll go to. I don't see a lot of reason not to click Shadow Claw here. He does go to Hydreigon, which is surprising because I think Iron Head was more common. Maybe he saw through that. So, good plan on his part. 
Uh, I don't love the idea of a nasty plot here, but he could be the Scarfer. Uh, I'm going to go to... You know, honestly, this is a bit of... I normally not make this play, but I'm just thinking about who he's going to use here. Draco Meteor doesn't seem that likely because my Club Fable is my obvious switch in. This guy's a Steel type to begin with, so it's not going to be that effective. So I think it's either a Dark Pulse or maybe a Flash Cannon uh, or a Flamethrower. Flash Cannon would suck, but I think that Terrakion covers the other ones well, so I don't normally do this and I might regret it. He does Nasty Plot, and that's what I was more worried about, and this covers that pretty nicely. Uh, so now I should be able to threaten it out with a close combat, uh, but I'm faster than him even without the Scarf, which he doesn't know about. So he should definitely be swapping here. He's fearing a close combat. He could go to his Aegis Slash. Um, I could Earthquake, but I'm, I'm really afraid about losing this guy if I make a wrong prediction here. So I'm going to go to a Seismitoad on the Aegis Slash, I'm hoping. He stays in the Flash Cannons. I think that's a really poor play on his part, but I mean, I overpredicted, so I guess that kind of came back to bite me. Uh, I'm expecting a Draco Meteor here. Oh, wait, Dark Pulses. So that means he probably doesn't have Draco Meteor. Wait, another Flash Cannon here. I'll get a bit of health back. Yep. Um, Flash Cannon. My Egg Slash is a lot of Spadef. He's obviously Dark Pulsing here. So that was unfortunate. He kind of got chip on my whole team. Um... I, I don't love how I played that. I should have just called his bluff there. Or he called my bluff, I suppose, is more accurate. Uh, but I'm not going to do that twice. It does go to Marum Wash. I was a bit worried about Aegis Slash there, but I don't think that crit mattered. I would have 2 it KO'd it anyways. Just a Dragapult. He might not know I'm faster. I think this kills. Oh, his own Pult is Scarfed. But doesn't really pay off for him. So I thought it would be faster and Oko him just from the get-go. But he goes to Aegis Slash. I'm not sure what set this guy's going to be. Um, I'm going to my Manda Buzz. Whatever it is, I can always be a bit safe. Okay, that suggests to me it's likely banded. I don't know for sure, though. In the meantime, I'm going to knock off whatever it is. Yeah, knock off is a great play for covering all possibilities. I'll go to Clefable on a Fairy Tip move. Nuzzle. Okay. It's a bit annoying, but we can hold that. A Wish. I feel like with that spread, uh, the Sacred Fire isn't... No, it's, it's Assault Fest. It's definitely a Sacred Fire. But that's fine. There's no reason not to Shadow Claw here. Uh, if it attacks first... I'm not sure what speed tier it's at right now. If it attacks first though, with the Fire-type move, I can definitely eat it up. And uh, the Shadow Claw is going to kill something. Maybe not kill the Cinder Race, but it'll do a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Not quite kill, but pretty much the next best thing there. Uh, and Terrakion's are super low, but he's in a pretty great position right now. I'll go to Seismitoad here, probably on the U-turn. No, he does Pyroball and misses, that's unfortunate for him. I think I'm going to Scald in case he goes to the Aegis Slash there. I'm in a pretty great position right now. Looking like I'm on the verge of a 6-0 in fact. Goes to Hatterene. He's really afraid of the rocks. I was tempted to there because I thought Hatterene switch was unlikely, but... Calls my bluff, kind of. Uh, again, Aegis Slash, even he clicks for a fire move off the rip, which doesn't seem likely to me. Aegis Slash still covers things nicely. Uh, then I'm going to click a Shadow move again. Does Mystical Fire, but again, I eat that right up as long as I don't get paralyzed. That's great. This thing should die. There goes that. Shadow Sneak is close to sweeping at this point. Uh, let's see if we see a Shadow Sneak here. Um, if he close combats, he's a legend. <laughs> Shadow Balls instead. Okay, so I was wrong about the uh, set. Looks like it's probably just a more standard set. Uh, flamethrower is going to kill something. I expect he goes to his own and hopes for a speed tie. He does. I'm going to go to Michael Fable because I'm an asshole who wants to get a 6-0. <laughs> oh, he predicts me. Good play, good play. I don't think that would have killed. Uh, I was going to protect just to get some chip back, but that's actually a... Bit of a choking play. Uh, I'm gonna go to my Mandibuzz. I should have enough Spadef to eat whatever this is. Okay, never mind. I think I'm gonna have to get rid of the 6 0. Oh, shoot. You hate to see it. You hate to see it, but 
Terrakion does come in here. I actually don't have a great move here. That covers both. Well, I'm gonna Earthquake and something's gonna die. I wonder if that crit mattered. But that's a GG. That's the game. So we do lose a 6 0, unfortunately. I keep getting hit by these uh, nasty plot behind dragons, which is ironic because it's pretty pivotal to my own team there. But I want to see if I can get one more. I'm not sure what the length of these is going to be so far. I've been really enjoying BKC's longer ones, which I didn't expect would be likely, but I realize that 20 to 30 minutes is kind of a classic for this. But, anyways, on to the next game. And I'm not sure which of these leads. You really don't see Frostmoth that much. I haven't been seeing much toxicity at all. I might be remembering wrong, but I thought it was dropped to UU. So uh, we'll see, but um, these three are pretty likely leads just because people like to leave with, the, with their bulky pivots or a fast U-turn in Cinderace's case. Uh, this guy could go for rocks right out of the gates. This guy could even, one of these to go for a boosty move right out of the gates. So I just gotta take my time and go through the matchups here. Uh, Terrakion destroys this guy, destroys this guy, destroys this guy, uh, doesn't destroy this guy, destroys this guy, but doesn't destroy this guy. So two likely leads, it's not a good matchup, but everyone else I could absolutely abolish off the rip. I'm probably not going to leave with him though, just keep that sort of in the back burner as a matchup. Uh, Aegislash on the other hand, another good matchup, not a great matchup, definitely not a great matchup. Uh, okay matchup, great matchup, meh, depends on the set I suppose. This guy's a pretty aggressive set, so I'd be surprised if this is a setup Super Kamo'o, but I don't see a lot of other rockers, so I'm going to keep that in mind. Uh, Sasuke, I think this guy keeps a grass move at this point, so everyone gets a grass move this gen, so you can never be too safe, but it should be okay versus Tasha. Actually, I'm not sure about that. That's that's worth looking up in itself. Sasuke, Dr. City. Okay, so I should be fine. Uh, to at least kill it if that's off the rip. Uh, versus this guy, it's okay. Again, I don't love it with this dude. Clefable, uh, I don't like almost any of these matchups. He's gonna be pretty expendable. It checks his the two dragons rather neatly, but it's gonna be pretty expendable, I figure. Mandibuzz has some worse matchups than last time. Two weak types right there. And even offensively, it doesn't get much from me other than like a slightly okay U-turn. Uh, whereas my own Hydreigon, it should be able to melt this thing. Uh, do some good damage to this guy. It'll eat a pretty big U-turn from Cinderace. Uh, it'll get a flamethrower off on Corbin Knight. Uh, speed tie, if not lose to it, being a Scarfer. And it can threaten this thing out. So that's another good matchup, actually. Uh, but this guy's so frail, and he's going to be important in the game. So I think Seismitoad is a bit predictable. He might just read me, but um, it looked like it had the best spread there. He's going to go Komo'o. I wouldn't be surprised if he's going for rocks right there. Uh, if it's a bulky rocker, or if it's a setup sweeper, I think Toxic is nice no matter what. And he actually completely predicts that with his own Corviknight. That's crazy. Uh, I'm gonna Stealth Rock just to scope it out. Yeah, I was afraid of my U-turn. He could have just beat me and stayed in for a defog and drained on my Stealth Rock TP with his own pressure, but um, he likes to just swap out there. What if he goes to Cinderbase to try to court change? I wouldn't do that personally. He gets Frost Moth in. Uh, I think this is probably a Quiver Dancer if he's trying to get in before the obvious Stealth Rocks come in. So let's see if he Quiver Dances here. Or goes for a grass move. Okay, he does quiver dance. If he went for a grass move, that was a terrible plan on my part. I realized that way too late. Okay, so just looked it up, and this guy should be faster than a normal Terrakion after a uh, quiver dance. So I wouldn't be surprised if he gets cheeky and stays in. Doesn't. Swaps out. Goes to the Kamo'o. That damage was nothing, of course. Kamo'o is a tanky monster. I'm going to go to Clefable on the rocks. Threaten it out. Teleport to whatever he's switching to. I'm not sure who's gonna switch to here. Probably Cinderace, okay, fair enough. So my options here, I see are twofold, either Seismitoad or Terrakion. Seismitoad, I'd probably threaten with the Scald. That could invite in Hydreigon. I can't really see it inviting in anyone else that I'm too afraid of. There's Terrakion, if I go for a Stone Edge, it's a bit risky because it's got a low accuracy. If he's willing to risk it, that is even. Uh, but he doesn't know I'm Scarf still. He swapped, he swapped his uh, Frostmoth out before he could test the waters there. Terrakion does invite in Kamo'o again for free, which I don't love. So I think I'm going to go Seismic Toad because I like the Skull there. Because 
because the Komodo would just shrug it off anywho. It's for a U-turn, let's see who he brings in. The Corviknight, let's see if we get a burn, that'd be pretty awesome. I'm not sure who there, it's probably gonna be a defog here, so I'm gonna Stealth Rock on the defog. Just let him know. I'm willing to play this game, brother. So I think my choices here are twofold. Corviknight is a bit of a problem for this team, that's why I included the Flamethrower on my Life Orb by Dragon. So we keep fishing for a burn, that'd be handy in the long term. But uh, it's such an aggressive game, I feel like I wanna get my Hydreigon in and go for a boost on another, oh he goes for Brave Bird there, interesting. That wasn't what I was expecting at all. And that's probably a bad play if I'd stayed in on Hydreigon, so I don't totally get that from this. Like I'm not great on my part, I have the Corbin pretty pressured and I have Roxy, but he doesn't. Uh, and I can still pass a wish to this thing. Okay, that suggests to me that this thing is scarfed. I wouldn't be surprised if he U-turns here at all. Uh, but I also don't want to look like a dummy in case he goes for just a big hitting uh, special move. So in that case, I'll go to Manda Buzz. He doesn't mind either of the options. Well, I think that was a bit of a mistake because I probably invited the Toxtricity, yep. Toxtricity gets in here, uh, which is a special attacker that completely destroys my special wall. So that's not fantastic. Uh... I'm gonna read the, I wonder if it's a setup sweeper though. Oh, that's tricky. Well, my best matchup versus this thing is my Aegislash. So I think I like the idea of going to my Seismitoad on an electric move. And then if he clicks a, another move afterwards, like a poison or a normal type move, my Aegislash is a safe move afterwards. So let's see if it pans out for me. Nope, he does predict me just completely there. There's a ton of damage. I think that has to be specs. Uh, I don't have much of a on this thing, but to Oko a Seismitoad, I think that's definitely specs. So that invites this guy in for free. Okay, so this guy has to make a switch again. Uh, I don't, again, I suspect he's choice locked, so he has to swap. And I want something that covers everything equally. And I don't want that Corbinite getting back up to full, more importantly. So I think I'm going to, I was just between Shadow Clark, Coast Combat. If he goes to Hydreigon, that would really suck, but I think the close combat is a bit more likely. If he goes to Cinderace, this thing should just completely die. Uh-oh. That, really, I wonder... That's actually really awful. I'll go to Terrakion on the Pyro Ball. It's gonna lose... Oh, he Court Changes here. Yeah, this is really taking a turn now. I'm gonna double to... Actually, this guy doesn't even know my set, so I'm going to close combat here. I don't want him doing, going for a U-turn. I, I was tempted to do a double to my Clefable, but uh, to beat his Komoo, but he still doesn't know I'm Scarfed, so I feel like he'd do a cheeky U-turn, which he does do, and he's so low health that it's a fair risk on his play. Uh, that'll probably invite in, I'm not sure, I guess the Komoo. No one else is really loving a close combat for my Terrakion. Maybe Toxtricity. Okay, it does go to Toxtricity there. Uh, he completely read me earlier. So my Hydreigon doesn't have the most wonderful matchup at this point. I'm tempted to just sack it, but um, I hmm. losing that test method sucks because he can click the boom burst. Uh, sorry, he can click the uh, overdrive pretty freely as a result. But oh well, I, I might be a mistake. But I'm gonna sack this. I don't think I'll get the chance to wish pass to it with this kind of fast paced game, anyways. Uh, go to Terrakion again. This time he knows it's scarfed. I'm gonna click close combat again, man. I wonder how much this does. Probably not enough, maybe 30%. We get a crit, we get 50, that's nice, but not enough. Uh, I wonder if he's gonna click a body press here. Uh, I'm gonna have to go to, hmm. I think I have to go to Clefable. Nothing else truly threatens it out. I don't wanna risk my Aegislash's health. Yep, that's okay. Toxtricity seems pretty likely here. Uh, I'm gonna teleport out. We do get Toxtricity again. I would hate it if he went to one of these two, but I've clicked close combat twice in a row. It seems pretty unlikely he's going to one of his levitator flying types here. So I'm gonna earthquake, but then, hmm, I don't love that to be honest. I'm actually gonna double to Clefable again. Oh, he goes to Corviknight. That really doesn't work out for me. He does, well, he, I, my other inclination was to click earthquake. So that would be even worse. But that invites a completely free roost on my opponent's part, which does not, I don't like that. Yeah, I think that's really devastating for me now. I need this guy below 50% for this guy or the Terrakion to kill. Am I 
biggest candidate was the Hydreigon, which I sacked, and I thought that'd be okay to do because it was so low health, but now I'm in big trouble. Uh, close combat would do a ton versus Toxtricity, but it hits everything else so hard. And Eggslash is a good match versus Toxtricity, so I don't think that's a very likely option here. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to his Hydreigon. Maybe to his Kamo. Maybe, does he know what set this is? He should know what set this is, for sure. So Kamo is probably pretty likely. Uh, he's faster than me, so I probably won't be able to 2-hit KO it, but we'll see how much damage it does before we make any judgment. Oh, he goes to Hydreigon. Great, he just gave it to me. That's awesome. Gives me a bit more of a chance. Toxicity comes in this time. I'm expecting an overdrive. I'll go to Clefable. Let's see how much it does. Probably does a lot. Yeah. Yeah, do not sleep on the Toxicity. Okay. Um, now I have to decide a sack. And honestly, again, in this high offense game, I feel like the Mandibuzz is maybe the best, but he's got way more health than this guy. And he's a much better matchup versus Kamo, but a worse matchup versus Frostmoth. That's tough. Not having rocks up anymore is going to really hurt. Um, that Corviknight is going to be so prob troublesome because I can't let this guy out with an Earthquake anymore. And this guy was still high enough that an Earthquake would just let it in for free at this point, so that's also troublesome. Um, which of these two walls do I want to sack more? Uh, and they both get completely hit by Toxtricity. I'm going to go with my gut and do Manda Buzz. Rakion, Stone Edge, should do about 50% to Corviknight, so if it swaps, if he swaps into it raw here, it'll be a 2 at KO, I don't, unless I get lucky with a crit, oh shoot, he actually stays in, and I die, I think that's almost certainly the game now, uh, I have to go to this guy in Shadow Sneak, I can't go to Club Able, obviously, which invites in Frostmoth? I'm not sure who I'd go to here. I think I have to get lucky with a crit or something to beat Corviknight. There's Kamo. -Oh. I don't agree with that play because it just lets me get my free switch in here. I think I have to protect. I'm even going to do someone else, but yeah, I don't I don't really agree with how he's playing this endgame, but he's obviously in an extremely strong position. I'm gonna wish. Oh, he gets a roll. No, no, I was just wrong. Nope. Fair enough. Uh I think I had a Shadow Claw. It's high crit. I could get it. Nope. That's GG. Okay. So I'm going to look over this one too. Oh, shoot. I misclicked there. I meant to uh, go review that again, but uh, I'll probably have to just go through the VOD and look through it myself. But yeah, it's going to do it for like the new era of uh, my lives. Again, it's going to be a bit more rough and uh, not as polished as some of the other ones you're going to see, but. I think it's important because it's more about a uh, learning focus and it's more about improvement and things like that. So hopefully me going through this and taking my time and sort of explaining my thought process will see some sort of improvement on my part. But uh, regardless, thanks for watching. If you liked, uh, maybe click subscribe or uh, like the video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys around.